Welcome to this brief tribute to Mr. Sam Blair, who passed away at his home on Monday the 25th of January. Today we remember his wife Vicky, his children Richard along with Lorna, and Sarah along with Jim, and his grandchildren Katie and Amy. Also his brothers Eddie and Jim and Mervyn and his sister Sharon, and the wider family circle. Sam was a Belfast man. He was born on the 9th of September 1948, and he grew up in the Woodvale area of the city, and he was schooled locally too. After school, he began to work as an apprentice radio and TV engineer, and it was various forms of electronic engineering that were to dominate Sam's working life. He worked with Gilpins and Sandy Rowe, and later with Vision Hire, when he was installing and fixing televisions all over the city. He did some further study and became qualified as an electronic engineer uh, through the Belfast Institute. That led to him taking a job with the Government Training Centre, which he really enjoyed. He was seconded for a time to Daewoo's new plant, and indeed that led to him doing some training out in Korea. When Sam and Vicky moved down this direction, he took a job in Craigavon Hospital and became the technical manager there, looking after all the hospital equipment. In the midst of all of this, of course, he had met Vicky. He was from North Belfast and she was from South Belfast and they met in the middle at a dance and they were married on the 1st of September, 1970. They celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary just a few months ago. When Sam and Vicky were married, they set up home, first of all, in Belfast and then moved down to Lisburn. And in 1998, they came to Dollingstown where Sarah was living. And then after a little time out at Balteg near uh, Rushmere, they moved to Woodford Park, where Sam set about transforming that house into the fantastic home that it is today. Sam, we know, could turn his hand to anything. Sam had a keen interest in sport when he was at school. He was a keen swimmer and a gymnast and a rugby player. In later days, he was an able clay pigeon shooter. And he also practiced judo and aikido. I only found that out very recently. I was visiting him and he told me this and quickly demonstrated with almost no effort that uh, he could still have all of his old skills. He put my wrist into a wrist lock and uh, it made me want to hand over my wallet almost immediately. He was a keen follower of sport too. He was very interested in Ulster rugby and Formula One and the career of Lewis Hamilton. Sam had been a very hands-on dad whenever the children were smaller, Richard and Susan. Vicky worked as a hospital auxiliary and when the children were small, he would often take them out uh, on a Saturday to allow Vicky to catch up on sleep. And there were many memorable trips in all kinds of weathers and there were family holidays all over Ireland. And later when it was just Sam and Vicky, there were great cruises, especially in the Mediterranean because Sam loved the sun. Those parenting skills were very uh, useful whenever the grandchildren came along and Katie and Amy were just adored by Sam. The rules for grandchildren are a little bit different, of course. And Sam was a dedicated joker and nowhere was this more demonstrated than at Halloween when the girls would begin their trick-or-treating with a visit to their grandparents and Sam would have been spending weeks and weeks figuring out how to terrify them. Anyone who has known Sam in recent years will know that he was a Christian with a deep personal faith in the Lord Jesus. And you might be forgiven for thinking that that faith was a, a long-standing thing from his earliest days, but he'd actually come to faith relatively late in life. He and Vicky had come to Hill Street, and Sam told me the story just after he came of how he'd collapsed one day and banged his head on the wall, and when he'd brought a, a chap in to fix the damage, the person had looked at the damage that had been done and had just said, the Lord had his hand upon you there, Sam. And that little statement lodged in his heart and led to him trusting Christ. Sam made up for lost time, as it were. He loved to be at church. He read his Bible avidly. And he loved to talk with others about Christian issues and tease them out. And he was keen to share his faith with others. He could talk to anyone and and people found themselves talking to Sam about deep issues of faith, and he was great at pointing people to Jesus. He was also a great encourager. In 2014, he felt 
prompted to give a Bible to a missionary who worked in Macedonia. And it ended up in the hands of a young Macedonian believer. And she and Sam began to correspond and he encouraged her in the faith. And indeed, she encouraged him too. We really know the value of faith when it is tested. And nearly a, nearly a year ago, Sam received a very concerning diagnosis. And yet he handled that marvelously. He was an inspiration to anyone who visited. He wanted to be here longer, and yet he knew that he was being called home and he was absolutely ready to go. We know that he was prepared to die and we know that he was tremendously well cared for in that whole journey. And it was great that he was able to be at home with his family in recent weeks. Sam had asked that Psalm 34 would be read at his funeral. It begins, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. And then it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Sam had taken refuge in the Lord. As the Psalm says, he had encouraged others to taste and see that the Lord is good. And when we experience uh, the Lord in our own lives, it is our deep desire that others would know him too. And if we knew Sam, we knew that he, that was his desire for us. Let me pray for a moment. Lord, today we want to thank you for Sam. We thank you for his warm personality for his love for people that made him an attractive person and a great friend. We thank you for his faith in the Lord Jesus that was so evident. Thank you for his witness to and his help to others. Thank you for the courage with which he faced illness. We pray for his family, which we know will miss him so much. Bless them as they take refuge in you. And may they know, as Psalm 34 says, that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.